Hey, it's Maximo and welcome to Maximo's Travels. In this video, I will cover the 25 best things to do and places to eat in Victoria, British Columbia in Canada. I'll be checking out multiple attractions in Victoria's Inner Harbour, going to Chinatown, having a ride on a water taxi, going to Fisherman's Walk, seeing seaplanes land and take off, and going to the world famous Butchart Gardens. I'll be going to a number of eateries and generally having a fantastic time. Join me. We spent three glorious days in Victoria, which is nestled on the southern end of Vancouver Island. Victoria sits about halfway between Seattle in the United States and Vancouver in Canada. This video will cover 25 great things to see if you're staying in Victoria. The first and probably most visually appealing thing to do is to visit the Inner Harbour and Marina. Here's where you'll get fantastic views of the Parliament buildings which were finished in 1897 as well as the Fairpont, Fairmont Empress Hotel which was finished in 1908. The city has a population of around 400,000 people. It was founded in the 1840s by the British. In fact, Victoria was named after Queen Victoria of England. The famous Canada sign is a perfect backdrop to any Instagram or selfie photo. It features fantastic backgrounds of the Fairmont Empress Hotel, as well as the Inner Harbour and the Parliament buildings. A couple of hundred metres past the Canada sign, you'll find a great vantage point to view the Harbour Air seaplane terminal. If all that walking by the sea air is making you hungry and thirsty, you can always have a meal at Milestone's Bar and Grill that's nestled right on the waterfront. This place is a little bit expensive, but it offers fantastic vantage point of the harbour and offers fantastic food as well as ice cold beer and great cocktails. This part of the inner harbour is always full of people. There's plenty of things to see and do and it's great to watch all the people walk on by. The light here in the late afternoon is surely spectacular. If you're looking for a good breakfast, Discovery Coffee is a good option for you. They have fantastic donuts and they have gluten free donuts as well. It's a pity the coffee there is quite average. If you're in Victoria, you need to walk the streets of downtown Victoria. It's uh, fascinating. There's always something to see around every corner. And it's hard to get lost because the city is laid out in a grid. A site not to be missed is Munro's Bookshop. This is founded by Jim and Alice Munro in 1963. Alice Munro went on to claim the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2013. The bookstore is located in an old grand building with soaring and majestic ceilings. What a beautiful sight the building is and a perfect place to stroll and look for that perfect book to read while you're on your travels. A couple of hundred metres away and one street closer to the waterfront and you'll find Bastion Square. There's a ceremonial arch that is the entrance to Bastion Square and there's a large pedestrian mall. It's also built on the site of an old fort, Fort Victoria. There's quite a few cafes, restaurants and artisan shops in this square. Not too far away is Market Square. The entrance of this square also has an arch uh, at its front and the place features an open air square surrounded by heritage buildings. There's nurseries, cafes, restaurants and also uh, artisan shops in this square. It features a nice tree lined courtyard right in the middle. It's a really nice tranquil place to come and visit. There was even a bead shop, so Joe just had to go in and have a look around at uh, all the beads on display. A further block away is Chinatown and the famous Fantan Alley. 
Fantan Alley is less than a metre wide or three feet wide at its narrowest point. It's the narrowest commercial laneway in the whole of North America. This area used to be the centre for opium production as well as card games. The card game, funnily enough, is called Fantan, hence the name Fantan Alley. There's plenty of specialty shops, cafes, restaurants, offices and apartment buildings along here. It was just fascinating to walk through the laneway and the shops through Chinatown. An absolute must see in Victoria is jumping on and riding one of the little ferry boats. From where we were in Chinatown, we walked the few hundred metres to the Victoria Harbour Chinatown ferry dock. These ferries are the cutest little things you've ever seen. They sort of resemble miniature tugboats. They operate pretty much as water taxis. It's a flat fee of 15 Canadian dollars for any point to point. We went from the Chinatown dock all the way to Fisherman's Wharf.
Another must-see destination in Victoria is Fisherman's Wharf. You get to walk along a marvellous walk. The buildings are so colourful. There's so many people there. There's eateries, restaurants, cafes, somewhere you can get a drink. It's a perfect spot, especially on a nice sunny day. It's just magical catching the water taxi or ferry to Fisherman's Wharf, but it's a nice easy walk from the uh, inner harbour front. It's only about one and a half kilometres or about 20 to 25 minutes. We decided to have lunch at the Mexican seafood restaurant. We had an ice cold beer and some tacos. The beer was ice cold. The tacos and quesadillas that Joe had were absolutely fantastic. What have you got there, Joe? IPA. Oh, you're into the IPAs these days, aren't you? New addiction. Yeah. And my marvellous mister that we have. This thing right on the water in Fisherman's Wharf. Idyllic, isn't it? It was such an interesting and vibrant place to be. We enjoyed the sun, the light breeze, the music and just the great vibe that is Fisherman's Wharf. After we had some lunch, we decided to explore Fisherman's Wharf a little bit further. So we've just done a big loop from downtown to Chinatown to Fisherman's Wharf and back to the Inner Harbour. You get a chance to see the steamship terminal as well as walk along the Inner Harbour Causeway. A fantastic loop that can easily be done in a couple of hours. There are many museums and galleries to go to if you're into that sort of thing. We restricted ourselves to going to the British Columbia government buildings. That's the Legislative Assembly building that you see. Entry to it is free. We decided to have a tour of the buildings. Architecture of these buildings was certainly uh, neo-colonial British in style. The building reminded me so much of Melbourne's exhibition buildings and the interior so much of Parliament House in Melbourne. 
I guess there's a shared ancestry to both. We really enjoyed touring those buildings. There was quite a few people in there as well. We also enjoyed touring the outside of the building and admiring the fantastic gardens that surround them. Not too far from the government buildings is the Victorian Convention Centre and Crystal Garden. This was uh, built on an old uh, swimming pool, indoor swimming pool, and it features stunning gardens and a building of historic uh, importance. When in Victoria, you've got to try a Japanese or seafood restaurant. One of the best that we tried was Toro, right in the heart of downtown. This was quite an expensive restaurant. We did have a few drinks, but the total cost was over 250 Australian dollars. Would you like a little bit in a tiny, tiny glass? I, I would, thank you. What is it, a plum wine with uh, yuzu? Yuzu. Yeah. Yeah, can you read it? Um, no, it's all, in <laughs> it's all in Japanese. And it's dark in here. Kenpai Joe. Mm, it's plummy and uh, lemony. Mm. The food and the drinks at Toro restaurant were absolutely fantastic. It was a very authentic Japanese dining experience. I would highly recommend this restaurant to anyone that was visiting Victoria. In sticking with the food theme, you must go to Cora Cafe. It is a place that's pretty unassuming, but it has fantastic food, good friendly service and quite affordable. It has a number of vegetarian options and the Canadian bacon there is utterly fantastic. I would highly recommend coming here for breakfast at least once. I think a must-see attraction is going to the Bouchard Gardens. It is at least a half day affair. We spent about five and a half hours on this uh, semi-day trip, but it was well worth it. I will do a separate uh, video of this in a forthcoming video, so stay tuned for that. The best way to get to the gardens is by public bus. A $5 daily ticket will be uh, the cheapest way to get there as well. Tickets at the gardens are $41.50 Canadian each. So expensive, but the gardens are truly stunning. Buchard Gardens were extensive and spectacular. They really shouldn't be missed on your trip to Victoria. If you're looking for a trivia night and a good place to eat, Bartholomew's English Pub, located right next door to the Marriott Inner Harbour, is a perfect location for dinner. Bartholomew's really did look like an old English pub. It had a really vibey atmosphere. We had chicken and chips, uh, and Joe had some loaded potato skins. We each had um, a couple of scotches and gins each respectively. The food was fantastic. The service was pretty good and the total bill was around about 107 Canadian dollars plus a 15% tip. Reasonable value for where it was I thought. It was so busy for Tuesday night. I think trivia night packed all the people in. Is there anybody that would like to play trivia but does not have sheep? Trivia night. Mm. Fantastic. Everyone seems to be all set up. And can everybody hear me okay? We had so much fun at Bartholomew's. The food was absolutely fantastic. And if you're into trivia, it's a good night to be had. Mm. It's very nice. 
We only spent two and a half days in Victoria and had a fabulous time. There's a number of things that we could have done, but we just hadn't the time for. One was to ride on one of the seaplanes. We did go to the Air Harbour Airport and watch a few take off, but we didn't get the opportunity to ride them. If I was to come to Victoria again, I'd certainly consider going on one of these seaplanes. But you are able to see them land and take off from virtually anywhere around Inner Harbour. We would have liked to have had afternoon tea at the Fairmont Empress Hotel. There's also Miniature World that's located within the grounds of the hotel complex. Other things we didn't get to see was Beacon Hill Park, the Royal British Columbia Museum, Craig Doric Castle, just to name a few. Oh well, we'll have to come back another time. I do hope you like this video. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notify bell so you'll never miss another future video. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider buying me a coffee or smashing that super thanks button. Until our next adventure from Canada, you take care and bye now. Thank you.